glad that you came. Today we're going to hear the story about Booth Tucker and the Fringle. Once upon a time, a long time to come, a day in the far distant future, a baby was born to a hopeful young couple, a boy, and they named him Booth Tucker. A lovely boy, said the doctor and nurse. A beautiful boy, said his mother. There's only one thing that I think is quite odd. His eyes do not match one another. Oh dear, cried the doctor, what a state of affairs. I fear he is branded for life, for everyone knows that the color of one's eyes is supremely important to a man of our culture. But alas, it was true. That sweet little baby, so perfectly made, had one eye that was brown and the other one blue. We'll love him and teach him to stand on his own, Booth's father's voice was grim. And someday people will remember Booth Tucker, and we will be proud of him. Yet sadly, the doctor's predictions were right. For though he was good and his parents' delight, he was simply not accepted by folks in the know, for he was different, quite different from everyone else. He tried wearing glasses, but that didn't work. For in that day and age, no one needed those things, and he really stood out in the crowd. If I squint, then perhaps no one near me will see that the shade of my eyes is all wrong. And it worked for a while, till someone made him smile, and he opened his eyes much too wide. People whispered and stared at this strange, lonely child. A quirk of his genes was the standard opinion. An inferior mule. A mutant, I'm sure. And thus, they dismissed him and left him alone. From my early recollections, I was different. Though my parents tried to hide it, I was different. People often stop to stare, guess they think I'm not aware. Or perhaps they think I care that I am different.
somewhere or other young Booth heard the story that Jesus had died for his sins. And the more that he listened, his heart was quite glad, for it seemed that this Jesus who loved him so much didn't care that his eyes didn't match. <laughs> amazing he said to himself God loves a fellow like me but then if he made me and I'm certain it's true he knows I've one brown eye and one that is blue <laughs> Change me through and through And though it's unbelievable I know that it is true It's amazing what the love of God can do Oh, isn't it amazing What the love of God can do The power of love at work in me Has changed me through and through And though it's unbelievable I know that it is true It's amazing what the love of God can do How happy it made Booth Tucker to know God accepted him just as he was. At last someone loved him, accepted and loved him. That thought made his heart fairly swell. There have to be others who don't know the story. There are others whom I need to tell. <laughs> Yeah. 
everywhere that he went, young Tucker proclaimed the wonderful story he knew. But no one would listen to the eager young man or believe what he told them was true. Perhaps if I go to some far distant land, perhaps they will listen to me. For surely there's someone, somewhere, who needs to know that the news of salvation is free. But try as he would, he could not find a church to send such an unlikely fellow. A missionary must be an upstanding man, a fine and a healthy young man, one fit for the rigorous, vigorous life to weather a far distant land. With the problems you have, I'm sure you can see what a truly unlikely contestant you'd be for the rigorous, vigorous, treacherous life you'd find in a far distant land. Undaunted, young Booth went from city to town, to synagogue, churches, and temples. Still, no one would listen, and no one would send him, though he prayed from morning till night. Quite by accident, then, Tucker heard something new, and the thought made his heart beat quite fast. For here, perhaps here, he could fill his desire to witness for Jesus at last. A small expedition was leaving quite soon. Small expedition, indeed. Booth Tucker was first man in line at the gate for a gospel advance to the moon. The Salvation Army was heading the mission, a very small mission indeed, and they were quite happy with this volunteer who was ready and willing to leave. A small family group huddled in the chill air to witness this unique event. Incredible though it may seem, his dad said. Booth Tucker believes he's been sent. To carry the faith to the moon is a goal that has filled that boy's mind and his body and soul. While I haven't much faith in his future success, we can pray for his speedy return. And they did. Thus, sent off with a prayer and a wave and a tear, Booth Tucker relaxed with a sigh. God's love is still with me, he said with a smile as the rocket rose up through the sky. Nothing can move me, nothing can remove me, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Nothing can move me, nothing can remove me, nothing can separate me from the love of God. If I'm high in the heavens, He'll be there. If I'm deep in the ocean, He'll be there. If I climb the highest mountain, He'll be there. If I cross the wildest desert, He'll be there. just so happened that on the moon, on the coldest side of the globe, there lived a Fringle, a most beastly chap, dwelling alone in a cave. The reason he lived alone, you see, is really quite apparent, for Fringles are known to be frightfully mean and rude and antisocial. To make matters worse, as Fringles go, he was really undistinguished, not big like his brother or green like his mother, as all well-bred Fringles should be. His complexion had long been a thing for concern, though his mother was sure he'd outgrow it. For whatever his mood, be it grumpy or glum, his color would change from a green to a blue, and the matter he got be soon became purple hue. And everyone knows that a purple fringle is not the kind of creature to marry. From my early recollections, I was different. Though my parents tried to hide it, I was different. People often stop to stare. Guess they think I'm not aware. Or perhaps they think I care that I am different. No one likes to be. 
be different to be different. No one likes standing out in the crowd. No one likes to be different from everyone else. No one likes to be different. It's so hard being different. No one likes to be different from everyone else. All alone, many moon years, this Fringle existed eating rocks by the light of the earth. And he grumbled and muttered a miserable creature, regretting the day of his birth. His hair was a mess. And his teeth needed brushing. And the pouch on his tummy had long needed dusting. There's one thing that needs to be known about Fringles. They carry their heart in a pouch. It's much more convenient for needed repairs or to search or examine or touch. But this Fringle's heart was as hard as a rock and as cold as an old hunk of stone. And he barely noticed its empty condition and ignored the occasional ache. So it was, on a fine moon day of the week, Booth Tucker set out to explore. He would conquer the moon for the Lord, he was sure, and he knelt in the moon dust to pray. It was thus that the Fringle laid eyes on Booth Tucker and the sight made his temperature climb. But then, that's not surprising. If you know about Fringles where it happens a lot of the time, his green furry face quickly turning to blue was contorted with anger and rage. And soon he was purple, a violent purple, and his eyes were, well, really, quite fearsome. He roared and he shrieked and he snorted and spit. Such a nasty response. He threw quite a fit. Poor Booth was amazed at the Fringle's response, and he blinked his strange eyes and said, I'm sorry to anger you, sir, but you see, I just want to tell you, salvation is free. The rage of the Fringle was cause for concern. I'm leaving, but I sure will return. And return he did, every day at moon time, and the message he spoke was the same. God loves you, my friend, just the way that you are. God loves you and knows you by name. And each angry response from the Fringle would echo from Moonrock to Moonrock to Moonrock. Now you might think that Tucker would soon Tucker out with such disagreeable language. But seeing the Fringle change color each day had endeared the old beast to his heart. For here, surely here was a need for the Savior and he preached and he prayed even more. God did not call me to be a success, but to faithfulness, and I can see that if I'm to succeed, it's his spirit indeed that will change that old Fringle at last. Now strange as it seems, something quite unexpected was happening inside the Fringle. After living alone all that time in the cave, never seeing a soul living or dead, he began to look forward to seeing Booth Tucker and to hear what the strange earthling said. God loves you, my friend, just the way that you are. He loves you and knows you by name. He loves me and I'm different, or haven't you noticed? He loves me and my eyes aren't the same. Before the hopeless and for the God could care about Fringles. He stopped all his yelling and snorting and such and sat down to hear for a change. Booth Tucker then told him how God's only son had come to the earth to bring peace. How he taught about joy and compassion and love and had healed the sick and the blind. He told how he died. And here Tucker cried. 
Jesus suffered for me, and for you, Fringle, too, because he loved us. God's son had to die. A strange sound was heard, like the splintering of glass from the pouch of the old Fringle's tummy. With tears in his old Fringle eyes, he reached down and pulled out his heart in his hand. It was broken and shattered in hundreds of pieces, and it ached, how it ached with each fragment. To think someone loved him the way that he was, and to think that that someone had died. Don't cry anymore, dear Fringle, said Booth. He didn't stay dead. He's alive. It's the truth. Then Booth told the Fringle the wonderful news that Jesus arose from the grave. It's the truth. Now the Fringle sat motionless, colorless too, with his poor broken heart in his hand. It was hopelessly shattered and useless by now, and he knew he was lost and alone. So forlorn was the Fringle that Booth could not bear it. Give Jesus your heart, for I know he'll repair it. And he did. Then and there, as Booth offered a prayer, gave that poor broken heart to the Savior. And that old hunk of stone was transformed in an instant, not repaired, but brand new in an instant. <laughs> glowed with such warmth that it lit up his eyes and changed his sour desire. Such a sweet Fringle smile spread across his broad face. Why, it even renewed his complexion. From the purple and blue he changed, it is true, though Booth didn't know what to think. That violet color just faded away until he was valentine pink. What a change. What a difference the Savior had made. Booth cheered and he prayed in thanksgiving. Thanks for loving us, God, just the way that we are. Thanks for dying for us and for living. Now everywhere the Fringle goes, he's a wonder unto many, for everyone knows that a Fringle is mean and rude and antisocial. But this one is not. He's a whole new creation, a witness for God to the moon-nighted nation. When he sees someone lonely or sad or rejected, he does what for Fringles is quite unexpected. He hands them his heart to hold for a while, and it warms them and comforts and helps them to smile. Then he tells them, and he shows them in his sweet Fringle way how Jesus can help them. And here's what he'll say. God loves you, my friend, just the way that you are. He loves you and knows you by name. He loves me and I'm different, or haven't you noticed? He loves me and I'm not the same. Very lonely and dejected 
rejected and a loser from the start And then I heard a message unexpected And that was when I got a brand new heart My days were filled with darkness and deception My heart was just a cold and empty thing Then Jesus gave my life a new complexion And now I have a brand new song to sing Oh, isn't it amazing what the love of God can do The power of love at work in me has changed me through and through And though it's unbelievable, I know that it is true It's amazing what the love of God can do So if you think that no one understands you Your life is just a cold and empty When you see someone lonely or sad or rejected, do what for humans is quite unexpected. Hand them your heart to hold for a while, and it will warm them and comfort and help them to smile. Tell them and show them in your sweet human way how Jesus can help them. Now you know what to say. God loves you, my 